the part of this story that I done left out is that after my hunger strike and everything happened, I'm pretty far into college. I'm a grad student studying cybersecurity. And I done got me a job working for the Department of Homeland Security, but not really for them. It was for the University of Texas San Antonio. Because Santone has a lot of military. And so I am basically doing memory forensics, but it's my own program. And I'm guessing they probably want to own my program. I don't care. I already decided I'm giving away this program. I'm going to use it to make myself famous as a programmer, or at least I'm going to show people I can code. This, this is a program I wrote in Scala called BBS Volatile IDS, Big Brain Security. And so basically, um, one day my boss, she, she calls me up. Or she, she sends me a message on, on my computer and I get it in the morning. I'm like, oh, I got to go meet my boss. So I, I, go, to, I go, to, go to work right away, which is at University of Texas, San Antonio. And I go, I go in there and there's no one there. And I'm telling you, they all came in. Like I said before, all these people in suits. And then one of them says, I'm chief technical officer of the NSA. The president has sent me here. Literally, he said, the president wants you to write software and what he wants you to do it's not really writing software what he wanted me well it is writing software he wanted me to basically write linux but like take linux and then make it for security it make it a uh, android security version of linux and basically what happened is uh i didn't want to do it because i didn't like the nsa at this point i really didn't like them i don't, I don't think they knew how much i didn't like them I had been real nice to the NSA for a lot of years because what happens is when you know, like when, when no one cares about your hunger strike, you feel like you're crazy. But then you also know, well, the government robs me every time I try to do a hunger strike. But then you also think that your, your, your hunger strike got out because you don't think about the possibility you could have been censored in the United States of America. This is, this is not the kind of country where you get censored for doing a hunger strike. All right, so basically the president comes to me and asks me, to go and write Android Linux, Android cell phone Linux for computer analysis. And I was like, this is all right. It sounds like big brain security for an entire cell phone and that my big brain security does Windows 10. I thought maybe I could figure out how to do it. And then I realized I, I don't know how to do the, the bootloader or whatever. I don't know how to do all that shit. The, the like, I don't know how to install. Like, I, you want me to come out with my own version of, of, of Ubuntu? Like, you think I'm that smart? Uh, no, I'm not that smart. And plus I'm a student, like I, this is a part-time job. And so I didn't do it. And plus I was doing industrial control system. I, like, I pretty much decided at some point, I'm gonna do real security. I'm gonna take care of the power grid. I'm gonna take care of what matters. I'm gonna take care of my water. I'm gonna take care of like places that would be scary if they got hacked. And so that's what I started thinking about late in college. And I think that completely changed my perspective on security completely. All right, so yeah, I was working for the president. Now, apparently what I hear is Bill Barr done, got determined because he thinks he's gonna put you in prison. Because now you're, especially because now you're famous, now he's really got to put you in prison. But no, what happened is you started running for president, but it was, he would say, well, I have a spurious correlation. Actually, Bill Maher would say that's a spurious correlation. And you know that? Mm, do I know that? Yes, you do, because what happened is that you were really mean to the government, you scared them a lot. Actually, what happened is, seven years ago, I scared the government more. You think, you think that... You, you, Bill Barr, been more scared than back when I was doing naked magic in the forest, doing some Baracus chant shit, doing some blood magic? Mm-mm. You ain't ever been more scared than sitting there watching me buck naked in, in, in a town. I've been the normalest motherfucker you've ever seen in your whole life. Next thing you know, I'm naked and bleeding on crystals and shit. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's just, it's just kind of a disturbing thing. So you can say this is like, you no, know, suddenly he's scary now. Mm, I was making a point. Y'all sons of bitches act like World War III ain't gonna happen. Y'all sons of bitches act like this planet ain't got a limit. Y'all y'all are like the dumbest motherfuckers I ever seen in my damn life. So it's like, oh no, what actually happened is you got real scary. No, actually I've been watching these dumbass people and I've been watching them censoring me and I've been watching them like basically like controlling the narrative and I've been watching the news and I'm sitting there going, you guys want everyone dead. And then I'm sitting there going like, how am I gonna break through? And then people start tricking me, making me think that World War III broke out because this, these explosions at these nuclear monitoring stations, right as I said, we, that, that India should invade China. We know India should invade Russia. 
And the next thing you know, I'm like, I think that this World War III breaks out and then my, my TV gets cut off. So all I'm saying is shit happens for a reason. And it, it sure seems like I'm the person that beat goes to my own beat. And then y'all are the people that go to the beat of democracy, which leads to what, it, what would, what would Alexander Tocqueville say? Something about um, like bleeding the coffers dry. Uh, something about um, not being strategic at all, not thinking like business people because you don't have to think like a business person. But why the fuck would you not? If you have if you have a way to like make tax money through like a, a, a natural process that's like I mean, like paying for DMV fines, but not in an annoying way. In an annoying way, when, why not do that? I mean, I'm just saying like, I mean, it sure seems like the government's not very practical usually, like they're, especially from like a business perspective. It's like the worst, it's like everyone that went to Harvard but was too stupid to understand business, which business is common sense, they all went into politics. But it sure seems like every single person now that actually controls things is, is from a specific Jewish, Jewish community in Washington DC and New York, or they're from a specific uh, a Catholic community in Washington DC. And, and I'm just saying like, it, it, it sure seems obvious. So it's like, wow, he starts saying things, we gotta put him in prison. Oh, well that's why he's just suddenly like, ding, 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 ding. Oh, Aaron Burnett, by the way, Max Lucado, real, real, real hard to, to convince anyone of that one. The guy that writes the most books ever. Like I wish like very clearly he knows me. Um, all I'm saying is, um, yeah, I, I think, at some point, you thought you could hide the Austin bomber forever because you control the law and you control the and you control the media, but you don't understand that at some point, if you tell enough people, if I really work at it, as, as long as Twitter's actually doing its job, like I assume that Twitter is letting me tag the media. If they're not, then like if there's any freedom to petition the media, like needs to be included in the Constitution for some people apparently. Yeah, so uh, I, I was the president had me working for him. I don't have an Android phone. I hate Android. That's why they did it. It's not that I hate Android. I, I just don't want to learn it. I, I, my understanding is that Android is actually very, very predictive of what you're going to say. And sometimes iPhones make you wrong on Twitter more than anything in the freaking world. It's like, how in the hell? All right. I was hanging over there yonder in Texas. Everyone's going on damn. I just found out my law enforcement rail club. Turned out this boy been hanging out with them Texas Rangers during the terrorist attack. Apparently, Walker Texas Rangers ain't done shit. Walker Texas Rangers too offended by the, the possibility of, of of a person talking about rape that it, like the the, the 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 words rape are so offensive to Walker Texas Ranger that he will, oh, oh and, and saying that this group of people from a church in Waco is a cult when they ask you to go to church three times a week and it's always a different one? Oh, don't, don't, don't say that to one person and don't whisper that, that, that Antioch's a cult. Don't say that. No, we're gonna kick you out of West when you're the only person that knows the information. So Walker, Texas Ranger has a blushing problem, basically. So he can't do his fucking job, which is basically, like, apparently a lot of Texans and a lot of conservatives. And the conservatives are wrong. Oh, why are you saying this? It's because you can't do your fucking job because you're too conservative. Because it makes you, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't, I, I might see a naked girl.